Welcome to section 6.7. Okay, gentle people, we're going to go ahead and keep practicing these ice tables, and we're going to add a little bit of nuance to these ice tables. So in this case, what I want you guys to do is take a look at this equilibrium equation and notice the KP value that I'm giving you here. Now, what I want to talk about is when we have a K value that is really, really tiny. So I'm talking something like 10 to the negative 2, 10 to the negative 3, 10 to the negative 4 or less. So again, we're going to start with our problem. I'm going to give you guys initial pressures. And this time, instead of finding the pressures at equilibrium, let's go ahead and find the total pressure and determine one of the pressures at equilibrium the H2 pressure. So what I want you guys to do is go ahead and build this ice table. So pause the video, use the data from the last slide, see if you can get this. Uh, keep this slide handy because I'm gonna go ahead and build this ice table for you guys. All right, gentle people, let's get some more practice. We're gonna first go ahead and write down our equilibrium equation. So methane plus water, gets us carbon monoxide plus three things of H2 gas. I'm going to start out by writing I, C, and E, and I'm going to go ahead and put my initial values. So my initial values, 1.40, 2.30, and then 1.60 ATMs. These are all pressures. And of course, my hydrogen, I did not mention it. And so what we're going to assume is that it is not there at the start. So let's do our change. We see that one of my products is zero. So that means I'm going to have to make products. So both of my products get a plus. And to make my products, I'm going to have to consume reactants. So that's going to be negatives on that side. Then we can go ahead and use our stoichiometric coefficient to relate the changes to each other. So this is going to be minus 1x, minus 1x, plus 1x, and then, of course, plus 3x. Then, of course, we go ahead and do i plus c, which gives us our e. So 1.40 minus x, 2.30 minus x, 1.60 plus x, and then we get 3x because 0 plus 3x is going to get us 3x. So hopefully you guys are getting comfortable building these ice tables up. If not, make sure you guys are doing those book problems. So here's this ice table nice and printed out on the slide for you guys. So the next thing we can do is we can try to put our KP expression. So products over reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. So here's my KP expression. Now what we can do is we can put our equilibrium pressures into our KP expression. So here's what I get. And now you see the problem that I want to discuss with you. So I want to go ahead and solve for X. And I want you to look at what a mess we have in this problem right here. We've got x to the third. We're going to times it by 1.6 plus x. So I'm going to get a fourth degree polynomial here. I'm going to have to foil the bottom. This is a really tough problem. We got, we've got something more than x squared. So the question really becomes, how do I solve this problem? So let's go ahead and take a step back and think about some of the information that I gave you here. Now, what you might have noticed is I try to draw attention to that KP value. We say that KP is really, really small. If it's really, really small, that means that the amount of products that I can produce is really, really tiny. And so remember, I had zero products. My change is going to be the change to get that product to that equilibrium, which now I'm saying is really small. So what we can say here is that x must be really, really small as well. Now, with this information, what we can do is we can make an assumption. Let's say that x is really small. So what I can say is that if I have something that's 1.6 plus x, 
Well, that's about 1.6. So to give you an example, Jeff Bezos is a billionaire. So if I were to give him a thousand dollars, it really doesn't matter. He's still a billionaire and he wouldn't care too much. And so it's for this reason we can say that if I go ahead and minus X or uh, add X, basically X is a non-factor. It, it doesn't affect the significant figures. So I can use this to try to simplify my problem. So this is gonna be our assumption and we're gonna check if our assumption is true. So let's go ahead and remember what's happening. This is a beast of a problem to solve. It's gonna be really hard to solve for that X. So what I'm gonna do is make an assumption and say that 1.6 plus X is about 1.6. So in essence, I'm taking this formula and any time there's a minus or a plus X, I'm going to go ahead and remove it. So this top equation becomes this bottom equation. Now I want you to be careful, don't remove all the X's. You still have to solve for X. So anytime there is a times X by itself or a three X or two X all by its lonesome, you cannot eliminate that. If I take Jeff Bezos' money and times it by a really small number like 0 0.01, well, that means he's gonna lose millions of dollars and then he's gonna start caring about you multiplying uh, by a small number. So make sure to keep that there. If I go ahead and do this, this equation right here is easily solvable and what I get is X is 2.4 times 10 to the negative third or X is 0 0.0024. Now what you'll notice is that this is a really small number. To verify this mathematically, we can check our assumption. What you guys can do is you can take this value and see what percentage it makes up of the addition or subtraction. So in other words, take your X value and go ahead and see where it was subtracted from and check if it's a small portion of it. So in this case, if I wanted to check if the 1.4 assumption was correct, 0 0.0024 divided by 1.4 times 100, that is 0.17%. So in other words, X is only 0.17%. Now your assumption is good so long as that X is less than 5%. So you can go ahead and say that X doesn't matter if it is only about 5% of the number that you're adding or subtracting from. If it's not, that means you have to do the problem in the normal fashion, meaning you cannot eliminate X and you have to keep X in the expression. To further drive home this point, let's evaluate things at equilibrium. So H2 was 3X, so three times that 0 0.0024 gets me this pressure of hydrogen at equilibrium. This is one of the values that we're looking for. But let's take a look at how X is not significant. So the concentration of methane, 1.4 minus X, 1.4 minus 0 0.0024. You see if I use significant figures, this is still 1.4. The same is true for water, it's still 2.3 and CO or carbon monoxide still 1.60. So this shows you that X, when I take into account significant figures, doesn't change it. I still have 1.4, 2.3, and 1.6. So the final thing is we can go ahead and add all these pressures up because I wanted the total pressure. And so I get 5.3 as the total pressure at equilibrium. So let's go ahead and practice this. So this isn't gonna be a multiple choice. So just mark right answer on the quiz question. I want you guys to build the ice table and go ahead and tell me what the equilibrium concentration is going to be at. All right, gentle people, let's go ahead and do what we always do and let's build our ice table. So we're gonna start with our phosgene gas. It is in equilibrium. 
with carbon monoxide and of course Cl2. And so I'm gonna do my ice table, I, C, and E. So my initial concentration, I gave you an initial concentration of phosgene gas at 0 0.095. I didn't mention what happened with carbon monoxide and chlorine, so we're gonna assume that these are zero. If those are zero, I have to make products. So that means I'm gonna have pluses on my product side and minuses on my reactant side. Everything is in a one-to-one -one ratio. So minus X, plus X, and then plus X. And then I plus C, so 0 0.095 minus X, X, and X. So now what we can do is we can write our KC expression. So KC is going to equal my products, CO times Cl2 divided by my reactants, CO, Cl2, and everything is raised to the first power. So I'm gonna say that this is going to be X times X divided by 0 0.095 minus X. Now to make my life easier, what I can see is my K is really, really tiny. It's 10 to the negative 10th. So I'm gonna make the assumption that X is really small. So anytime I see a minus X or plus X, I'm going to go ahead and do my approximation. So instead, what this is gonna be is this is X squared. Remember if X is times something, don't eliminate the X. But on the bottom, I can go ahead and eliminate that minus X because I think it's insignificant. All right, so this equals our KC value, 2.2 times 10 to the negative 10th. So if I go ahead and solve for X this time, I can times by 0.095, take the square root. I get that X equals 4.5 times 10 to the negative sixth molar. And so this is going to be the concentration of CO and it's the concentration of Cl2. So you guys can see those concentrations right here. Now, before I commit to this answer, let's make sure that my assumption is correct. So remember to check your assumption, you're gonna take your X value 4.5 times 10 to the negative six divide it by whatever you are subtracting your X from, so in this case, 0.095, and times it by 100%. And this turns out to be 0.0047%. So X is tiny compared to that 0.095. It is insignificant. If I were to do sig figs, uh, what you would still get is that the equilibrium concentration a phosgene is just going to be 0.095. Well, Chem1B, I hope that made sense to you, and remember to stay safe.